Let's talk about interfaces and abstract classes and how they're related. I'm going to start with a small example. Here I have a class called the Atlanta Braves, and they're going to derive from a class called Team. And we've got in here several overrides. That means that we're overriding what we're doing in that base class. But that base class, let's go ahead and navigate over to it, is going to be an abstract class. Now what I find often is that abstract classes and interfaces are used somewhat interchangeably. In some cases they'll use an abstract class and sometimes they'll use an interface. And there seems to be a general confusion about when to use which. And if we see the abstract class actually is defining things like name and city as members that need to be returned, and then a method called output team name. So this is the signature of what the abstract class is going to define as part of the contract that any class that derives from team is going to need to either use in the case of this virtual method or implement in the case of these abstract properties. The interface it derives from does something similar. It says that whoever implements this iTeam has to support a name and a city. And in this case, the iTeam and the team are doing very much the same things. They're defining what interface has to be implemented by the deriving class. And this is where some of the confusion comes in because both an interface and an abstract class can do this. One thing to remember is that you can only have one base class, but you can have multiple interfaces that you implement. Often when I talk to a customer about a code review we've done, I like to qualify this as an abstract class or really any base class should have an is a relationship. So in our case, the Atlanta Braves is saying the Atlanta Braves class is a team. The fact that the team class implements iTeam isn't a is a relationship. What interfaces are for are to guarantee that a contract is being fulfilled. And this relationship I like to think of as a can relationship. So the team can do the things that iTeam requires them to do. So the iTeam here actually isn't necessary at all. The base class of team does everything that we need it to do as far as the Atlanta Braves knowing that they need to implement the name and city for this to work and optionally override methods that are part of that abstract class. Remember that abstract classes indicate a couple of things. One, that this isn't a class that can be instantiated. It's abstract, so there are no concrete versions of this. They're only used as base classes for other classes. And the reason that's important is that by indicating abstract members of the class, you're indicating a contract much like an interface does. A key difference is that your abstract class can provide default implementations. So for example, if people that derive from team don't implement their own output team name by overriding it, there is a default implementation. That's not true for name and city. Because we're marking them as abstract, we're telling the derivers they have to implement these two properties. Instead, the Atlanta Braves class might define an interface that indicates what kind of team it is. And so in our case, instead of we're saying that we are a team, but we're implying some facility that we can produce. And in this case, I'll go ahead and create a new interface. I'll call iBaseball. I'm going to generate that new type as an interface. We're telling it people who implement iBaseball have to supply certain functionality. And this functionality may be as simple as a way to return a list of players, a way to return a list of managers, and return a schedule for them to play their games. So even though the base class for Atlanta Braves is already specified, this will force us to go ahead and implement these new members, which I'm not going to implement in our example. But you can see that the idea here is that a base class should represent what the class is. So much like a file stream derives from stream, because a file stream is a stream, here we're saying the Atlanta Braves is a team. This team implements an interface like iBaseball to tell it what kinds of information or what kind of contract of data that is related to the Atlanta Braves that is specific to some other property of it, like in this case, baseball. When you mix these metaphors and start to use or even duplicate having a base class, having an abstract class underneath and having an interface that all are really doing the same thing, and that is creating an is a relationship, you're adding complexity where you don't really need it. Let's look at the next lesson.